Hey guys, and welcome back to Lane vs. Anime, or Lane Talks Anime, whichever I've decided to call it. I, I'm still wavering between titles, but as you can tell, I talk about anime, or in this case, the anime season. Uh, I am sorry this took so long, I'm sorry it's so late, but I could not find my stand. And I've tried to do this holding my phone like in my hand, but no, no, that, that doesn't work because it, it wavers, it's, it's too bouncy, too jagged, and it makes my hand cramped. So we're, we're just going to do this with the stand from now on. And if that means that uh, I have to wait in order to use it, then fine. But we, again, are talking about Wistoria One Sword, and today things are getting dire because we officially meet the villain. Mars is the one who is voiced by Nobuhiko Okamoto. I originally thought he was voiced by Yoshitsuke Matsuoka because somebody made a Kirito reference, but no, he's he's voiced by Nobuhiko Okamoto like I originally thought. And he and his partner, who, now that I think about it, I'm not really sure what his name is or there because the person uh, doesn't, quite literally doesn't have a head, um, but we'll get to that. Uh, the, their voice is kind of distorted, so I'm not sure if they are a boy or a girl. But um, whoever they are, they uh, meet Colette and Johan, the, the, the other long-haired orange girl, whose name I, like, Johannes? Jo, jo, Joanne? Johan? Something like that. Anyway, they run into them, and we discover that they are after something in the labyrinth or the the head one i think just wants to kill people because he can like take people's heads and put them onto his body and, and he can use them as a mouthpiece because he does that with one of the teachers and then he just can just like kill them in a heartbeat and it was so incredibly creepy and i i, I don't blame the girls for being freaked out because they just watch one of their teachers, like, severed heads just blow up for no reason. Uh, and it, it, it was completely disturbing, and I think it very much worked in, in context of the show. I originally thought Mars was the one who was beheading people, but no, it was the other, the, the, the other person who, I'm not really sure if they uh, gave them a name. Um, some people have speculated that this is another um, one of Alfaria's spies, but I don't think this one is because I don't think Alfaria would just kill people left and right. So we, we met them, they don't really do very much because they get dragged away um, before before anything interesting can happen because Mars says they're on a time limit, or Mars say, he, he says they're on a time limit and they gotta get going. So uh, they meet Colette and you know, the, the, the other girl and then they just leave. Meanwhile, Will has succeeded in uh, be in befriending Wignall and basically the big late stage plot twist of the show or one of them is that everyone at the academy is a reject not just Will because up until this point we've had this feeling that Will is an outcast who's being bullied because he's he's basically a reject because he has no magic but it turns out that anybody who doesn't ascend to the higher tower is considered it a, it a reject. Uh, Wignall in particular was ostracized by his entire family for the type of magic he had and the fact that he was an elf because elves are basically looked down upon and treated like crap in this society. So I think that's honestly why he doesn't didn't like Will at first. Not because he truly didn't like him or any of the students, but because they all viewed Will as this kid who just kind of flounced in and started kicking ass and taking names when all of them have spent years trying to get to this point and they haven't been able to do it and he can just do it in a heartbeat. And it doesn't help that he knew Elfaria as a child, so he kind of has an almost nepotism position or like a leg up, to, uh, whereas they, they don't. So... They were just jealous of him because he was able to achieve in a few few months what they have been trying to achieve their entire lives and they're treated like crap for it. Um, so they basically took it out on him. And I honestly like this. I think it's an interesting angle 
um, because mostly with bully stories, it's just that they're, they, they pick on the, on the person because, but these people actually have a legitimate grievance with him, and they, they, they do, they take it out on him, but they're just upset because he, as they feel like he's upstaging them. Um, meanwhile, we do also get a funny scene between, oh god, what was it, Shion and Julius, where they're basically just having a dick measuring contest and yelling at each other and uh, for, for something I don't remember what but uh that that was very funny I think this show's gonna get a second half because it's really good and there's a lot more to this story or it, it's just kind of ramping up at this point so I have a feeling that there's gonna be more to this um I don't know if this is going to be a 24 episode show or if it's going to just get a second season because somebody once said that those are the same things but I do not agree at all. So that's it for now. Like this show, very fun, tension is high, villains are creepy, and let's see if it can carry into the finale.